So in this video, I'll be showing you how to calculate the molecular mass of compounds, okay? So it's either called the molecular mass of compounds or the relative molecular mass of compounds. Now, your first, the first thing for you to know is your definition. By definition, the molecular mass of a compound is simply the mass of one mole of that compound expressed in gram per mole, okay? So that means that the units, the basic units for the molecular mass of any compound is gram per mole, okay? Now, having said that, we'll consider the mole concept or the mean of mole in our next class. But for this class, we'll focus on how to calculate the molecular mass of compounds. Let's start with the first compound here, CaCO3, that's calcium trioxocarbonate 4. All right, the first compound here, you have CaCO3, that's calcium trioxocarbonate 4. So how do we calculate the molecular mass of this compound? Now, to calculate the molecular mass of any compound, your first task is to know the atomic mass of each of the elements that make up the compound. For this compound, I have three major elements that make up this compound. The first one is this, which is calcium. So I have calcium. The second one is this, which is carbon. So I have carbon. And the third one is this, which is oxygen. So I have oxygen. So basically, these three elements make up this compound. The next task is to get the relative atomic mass of each of the elements. For calcium, the atomic mass is 40. Okay, it's a constant. It's always 40. For carbon, the atomic mass is 12. Also a constant. It's always 12. And for oxygen, the atomic mass is 16. All right, so you can just check this up. All right, so um, in most cases, in most cases, you'll be given these values. All right, you'll be given the values. So you can note them. But then, if you're not given the values, an important concept to note is that the atomic mass of co of atoms or of elements is usually two times the atomic number, right? Sometimes it's two times the atomic number plus one. Other times it's two times the atomic number plus two. In some rare cases, it's two times the atomic number minus one. For instance, for calcium, the atomic mass, the, the atomic number of calcium is 20. If I do that times two, you have 40, which is the mass number. Okay, or the atomic mass. For carbon, the atomic number of carbon is 6. If I do times 2, you'd have 12, which is the atomic mass. Also, for oxygen, the atomic number is 8. If I do times 2, you have 16, which is the atomic mass. Now, this does not mean that the atomic mass of any, co of any atom or of any element is 2 times the atomic number. No, it doesn't work for all cases, right? But it's something that you should note. Okay, so having gotten these values, again, you can just simply do a, a search, right? If you search out these values, you'll find them, okay? They are constants anyways. All right, so having got these values here, let's now get the molecular mass of this compound. Now, we'll start with the first one here. For this compound here, the first element here is calcium. For calcium, we say the atomic mass is 40, so it becomes 40 plus, or we can put this in brackets if you want to. The next element here is carbon. For carbon, we said the atomic mass is 12, so it becomes plus 12. Then plus, finally, we have oxygen. For oxygen, the atomic mass, we said is 16, so it becomes 16. Now, observe that for oxygen, you have a 3 attached to it. Now, this 3 means that you have 3 atoms of oxygen. This value you have here will be reflected here as a multiplication, so it becomes 16 times 3. All right, so this is how we do this, okay? So whatever number you have here, you just need to multiply. This is equal to, I have 40 plus, this one here gives you 12. So I have 12 plus, if I do 16 times 3, that should give you about 48. Right, such that if I add this, 40 plus 12 plus 48 gives you about 100. Now, recall that we said molecular mass is measured in words there gram per mole which is your SI unit so the molecular mass of so the molecular mass of calcium trioxocarbonate 4 is 100 gram per mole so that's how we do this okay let's take another example let's see something of this nature let's see number two right number two let's say we have calcium trioxonitrate that's ca this 
then n o 3 2 let's say we have this all right so how do we calculate the molecular mass of this compound now we said the first thing the first your first task is to identify the number of elements in this compound in this compound we have three elements calcium um, ca okay the next element we have here is obviously this one here n which is nitrogen so i have n and then the third element we have here is oxygen that is what there O. okay so i have ca um, we have n also have oxygen next up let's record their atomic mass for calcium the atomic mass as we said in the first example is 40. for nitrogen the atomic mass of nitrogen is actually 14. while for oxygen the atomic mass is 16 as we said earlier all right you can get this value online if you want to okay so you can just simply do a simple search what is the atomic mass of nitrogen you have 14. all right all right so we have this they're actually constant so it doesn't change okay and again observe that this is literally seven times and again observe that nitrogen is simply seven times two which gives you 14. so that rule still plays here but it doesn't mean it plays for all elements please it does not play for all for all elements but it works here all right so if you have this let's now get the molecular mass of this compound now for cases like this that involves brackets your first task is not just to start solving but to expand the brackets I'm giving the bracket as uh, I'm giving this compound as CaNO3 to 2. My first task is to expand this bracket. This becomes Ca. Observe that the bracket encloses just these elements here. That means these two will multiply only the elements in the bracket. That means these two will multiply nitrogen first. That becomes N. For nitrogen, for nitrogen, um, For nitrogen, observe that the number here is 1. So if 2 multiplies this, I'll be having N2. For oxygen, observe that the number here is already 3. I'll use 3 to multiply 2. That becomes oxygen 3 times 2 gives you 6. All right. So if I expand the bracket, I will have this. Okay. All right. So at this point now, I can put in values. This is equal to the first thing, the calcium. For calcium, I have 40 as the atomic mass so 40 plus next up i have nitrogen for nitrogen we have 14 here as the atomic mass that becomes 14 but we have two atoms of nitrogen so it becomes 14 times 2 let me put this in brackets plus next up we have oxygen oxygen the atomic mass as we see here is 16 that becomes 16 times how many atoms do you have here we have six atoms so it becomes times six so we have this and this is equal to this is equal to 40 plus 14 times 2 you have 28 plus 16 times 6 what do you have so if you point 16 times 6 you have about 96 as your answer all right one final tax let us um add this up so 96 plus 28 plus 40 that gives you about 164 so i have this as 164 gram per mole so hence the molecular mass of this compound this one here calcium trioxonitrate is actually 164 gram per mole all right let's take a final um, example which is this let's take this example here so example three here we have Cu SO4 dot 5 H2O. Now this is this is pronounced copper tetraoxysulfate 6 pentahydrate. Right. So the 5 is called a penta. Right. It's called a pentahydrate. Um, let me write that down. It's called pentahydrate. Alright, this is the name of this compound. Copper tetraoxysulfate 6 pentahydrates so that's the name of the compound all right so having got that let's see how we can um name this compound so first things first of course let's get the number of elements in this compound first things first we have copper cu all right so that's the first element there copper next up we have um sulfur here 
so we have s solve for okay next up we have oxygen here so we have oxygen then finally we have hydrogen here so we have hydrogen all right um, this is still a repetition of oxygen so we don't have to repeat it we just have this all right so with this said let's see let's get the atomic mass of each of the individual elements now for copper the atomic mass of copper is 63.5 that's 63.5 for copper again it's a constant you can always search it up for sulfur the atomic mass of sulfur is about 32 for oxygen as we said earlier the atomic mass of oxygen is actually 16 why for hydrogen the atomic mass of hydrogen is one so you have one as the atomic mass all right so with this gotten what do we do next now for compounds of this form your tax is this you're giving the compound cu so4.5 h2o now how do you expand this your first tax is to do this i have cu copper so4 now you use this five here to multiply each of this right you, you use five here to multiply each of this so you can just see that becomes h into for hydrogen you have two here so it becomes five times this two here which gives you 10 in total also for oxygen you have five times what you have here which is one that becomes five times one which is five this is how you can do your expansion so this also works there are other ways to do this but i think here's like the easiest approach to it okay so this the idea is simply use the number here right to multiply each of the subscripts that's all so with this taking let's now expand this so this is equal to for copper we said the atomic mass is 63.5 plus for sulfur the atomic mass we said is 32 that becomes 32 plus for the first oxygen here you have that the atomic mass of oxygen is 16 that becomes 16 times you have four atoms so it becomes times four plus for hydrogen here the atomic mass is one that becomes one times the subscript here which is 10 so one times 10 plus for the second oxygen here we said for oxygen, the atomic mass of oxygen is 16. That becomes, in brackets, 16 times how many atoms do you have there? We have 5 atoms, so 16 times 5. So we have this. Alright, let's take this down. This is equal to 63.5 plus 32 plus, we'll punch 16 times 4, right? And if you punch 16 times 4, that gives you about 64. So 64 plus next up you have 1 times 10, which is 10 plus our next tax there is 16 times 5. And if you punch that, you have about 80 as your answer. All right, let's sum this up. Let's sum this up. This is equal to you have 63.5 plus 32 plus 64 plus 10 plus 80. If you sum this, this gives you. 249.5 that's your answer and of course my unit here is gram per mole all right so basically this is how you get the relative molecular mass of compounds of different forms so we have this all right so let me give you a task let me give you a task you have this compound here lead trigonitrate which is pb in brackets no3 and then you have two. All right. Uh, this is lead two trioxonitrate. Okay. It's actually lead two trioxonitrate. For lead PB, take the atomic mass to be 108. For nitrogen, take the atomic mass to be 14. And for oxygen, take the atomic mass to be 16. So with these values, expand your brackets and get the relative molecular mass of this compound all right leave your answer in the comment section all right so please if you enjoyed this video don't forget to hit the like button all right hit the like button like this video leave a comment for the comment tell us the relative molecular mass of this compound in the comment section and don't forget your si unit okay also please share this video to your friends so that they can also learn finally if it's, your, if it's your first time or if you've not subscribed yet, do well to subscribe to this channel for more content.
thank you and see you in our next class.